Hi, I'm going to show you how to set up and use the Steam Table Lookup spreadsheet that I've designed. It's designed for looking up uh, values from uh, the NIST webhook data. So, in order to access the spreadsheet, there are two files you need to download. Firstly, you actually need to work down the spread, uh, download the spreadsheet that actually does the computations for you. Um, but in order to put the data from the NIST webhook in there, uh, that's a free spreadsheet. All I've done there is taken the NIST data and laid it out in tables so that you can copy them across to the, um, to the spreadsheet. Because importantly, I'm, I'm not selling the NIST data. The NIST data is publicly available at their webhook. So you, you, you should always make, verify that the data is, hasn't been changed. It's very unlikely it will have changed, but if it does, then you'll need to just update the values in the spreadsheet. So there are two files to download. I've downloaded them here. So I'm going to open those up. The first one is the spreadsheet that you pay for, which gives, gives you all the computation. It does all the looking up for you. Okay. So there are two sheets here. The first one is where we actually do the looking up. The second one is where we input the data for the steam tables. So before I can show you how it works, we need to put the data from the NIST webhook, NIST webhook, sorry, into here. So I've got three tables in here. There's the temperature sorted table, there is the pressure sorted table, and then down here we have the superheated table. Now you see that this is a little bit different to what you would get in the NIST webhook, the NIST webhook, and you'll you'll see why that is uh, when I show you the functionality. So what we need to do is copy across the data. So I'll do that now. So this is the second one. This is the free file, which gives you our table. So you can see the layout is very similar. So what we've got here, the temperature sorted table, and I've outlined in green what you need to copy across. Okay, you can see that the layout of the header and the temperatures is exactly the same. So we're just gonna select the cells here from top left to bottom right copy that across, you can see where I've got my data from there. And I'm gonna go in here and what I'm doing is I'm using the edit, paste and match style, just because I like it to look nice and neat, like I've already got it laid out. So that's that table sorted. Repeat the process for the pressure sorted table and the superheated steam. So we're gonna select everything in that green border there, copy that across and Paste match values, it's all looking good so far. And now this one, the superheated steam tables usually come in a series of separate tables per pressure. So there's one table per pressure with variation by temperature. What I've done is I've put all the pressure tables next to each other here. That enables us to do the double interpolation, which you'll see when I demonstrate the functionality. So this is quite a long table, so we've got to scroll across a fair way, and then we're selecting down to here. So again, it's all got that green border, copy that, go to the top left cell here, copy and paste values. Additionally, because there are some gaps here, I've actually done some interpolation between these values, so we actually have a slightly wider range of values for some of the temperatures, some of the pressures, sorry. So there we go, that's our data all input now. You can see it's all there. Um, I have highlighted in light gray the values that I've interpolated to create this table. So that's all the data put into our database, if you like. Now when we go back to the lookup tables, we'll actually be able to start looking up data for different temperatures and pressures. So if we are, requiring information about a certain temperature from the temperature sorted table, then we use this first table over here. So let's zoom in on that so we can see. There are, in, we've, we've completed this task here because we've put the data in. What we want to do is put our desired temperature in here and what this will do then is it will find the low temperature that exists on the table and the high temperature that exists on the table and then it'll work out an interpolation factor. And then what it'll do is it'll return the high and low pressure value, the volumes, the internal energies, these, the enthalpies and the entropy values, it'll return those. 
so we can actually, if, if it's useful to know what the high and the low values actually were, but then it'll also do the interpolation for us. So it'll return those steam properties for the temperature that we put in. So at the moment it's got 32 in there, it's finding 30 as the low temperature on the table, 35 as the high temperature, and then it does the interpolation. So these are the properties of steam at 32 degrees. It does the calculation for us, the interpolation. So this is really, if you're learning how to do interpolation, this is not gonna help you do that. It can be a useful check to make sure you have done it correctly. But if you're, you're using the steam tables to look up data, this can speed things up by doing the interpolation for you if you haven't already built a similar model. So we can try that as well. And we could go to 37. So you can see the data updates here. We've got a new set of data for 37 degrees C. Of course, you may look up a value that is actually on the table. So let's say we took, put in 40. So 40 is on the table. So there's no interpolation to be done. So it's just looking up the data there directly from the spreadsheet. And you can adjust the precision of these cells to get the level of precision you need, just as you would on an ordinary spreadsheet. Anyway, that's doing the lookup for you there. This table functions in much the same way, except it's for the pressure table. So if you're looking up data for a certain pressure, so let's say we wanted to look up something at 0 0.13 megapascals. So this is all in uh, megapascals here, not kilopascals. So it's looking up the, the low and the high pressure now, what the interpolation factor is, and then it provides the, the corresponding properties for steam there. So that's how the temperature and the pressure tables work. They're quite straightforward. One of the really nice things, in my opinion, is this. So let's make that a little wider so you can see that. Okay. With superheated steam, you actually have two variables. So, the, the, sorry, two variables that you, you may need to interpolate for. You've got pressure and you've got steam. Now, this is why I've put each of the pressure tables next to each other, so we can search them collectively and do the interpolation between the pressure right uh, within one search. So, uh, in this case, we have an input pressure and we have an input temperature, and what we will be returned with is the corresponding low pressure, corresponding high pressure, what the pressure interpolation factor is, then a low temperature, high temperature, and a temperature um, interpolation factor. So we get both the interpolation factors here. The information that it pulls out for us, it returns the low and high temperatures for the low pressure, then it works out the interpolated steam properties at the temperature we've searched for, so in this case 325 degrees C. So we get the interpolated temperature factor, temperature values here, and then over here we do the same thing except for the high pressure. Okay, so it's looking at what the high pressure is, and it's returning the low and the high temperature values for that pressure. So we get those for all of the steam properties. So that's the specific volumes, internal energy, enthalpy, and entropy. And then we've got the interpolated value. So at the actual temperature we looked at, what's the um, properties for that temperature? And then finally, it does the interpolation between these values here. So it narrows it down to the pressure that we search for. So it does an interpolation with the high and low pressure values at the temperature we're interested in, does that double interpolation for us. So if you're using the superheated steam tables and you have to do double interpolation, I can assure you appreciate that's quite a lot of work unless you have a similar model. So that's the idea of this spreadsheet, narrow the amount of work down to just putting in the data that you're interested in. So let's try different pressure. Let's go for something like 0.27. So that's between two pressures. 
and we could go for a temperature of 720 and then we get the specific volume 1.756 the specific internal energy 300 3516 3974 for the enthalpy 8.9 for the entropy so that's uh, the double interpolation, very quick and easy. So yeah, hopefully you'll find that a useful addition to your workflow if you decide to go for this spreadsheet.